So we know that on the labor market, unemployed workers coexist with vacant jobs. Uh, and that's something that we'll uh, explain with the help of the matching function. But what people don't realize is that on the product market, uh, the same is true. Idle labor, idle productive capacity always um, coexist with um, vacant consumption, if you want, unfulfilled consumption. That is consumption that you would like to happen now, but only happen in the future, or consumption that you would like to happen now, but that's not available and you have to replace with something that um, is not as um, good or not as satisfactory. Um, and here I just want to document a little bit this, um, the prevalence of this unfulfilled consumption and explain uh, what I have in mind, because it's something that um, people are not uh, too aware of. So first, and something I should say is because that's something that's not in typical models um, and something that people haven't thought about too much. We don't have too many, uh, too much data on it. So I'll show you a bit of uh, anecdotal evidence and I'll try to give you a few numbers, although we don't have much on that. Um, so a first um, type of unfulfilled consumption is when you think of the household much more uh, as you know, a small firm, um, then it becomes very natural that a bunch of consumption is going to be uh, unfulfilled or vacant. Um, that's because if you think of the household that way, in certain circumstances, the household is quite similar to a firm. So for instance, um, if we think about, if we think about everybody's uh, favorite show, uh, Downtown Abbey, uh, the household there is basically operating like a firm. And um, so in a case like that, they hire um, butlers, for instance, um, or all kind of, um, you know, they have quite a large staff. So they also have cooks and cleaners uh, and so on and so forth. And so in situations like that, the household is going to hire workers that work for them. And therefore they have to post L-pointed ads to try to uh, find these tasks that would work for them. So in a case like this, you know, you have L-pointed ads that look, you know, very much like um, vacancies that are advertised by firms. Uh, but except that because the person who purchases uh, these labor, these services, your household and not a firm, um, here we are not thinking about, you know, really a labor market, but it's much more uh, about a product market because that's because the household is in charge of the purchase. And so um, also here's a distinction between, uh, because you're purchasing labor services, the distinction between product and labor market is not so meaningful. Um, nevertheless, here you have a household as um, the customer and the household is going to post l pointed ads that will take some time to fill and um, to get to higher labor services that will provide consumption. Um, so that's an example of if you want a vacant consumption, because for a while you would like to purchase these labor services, but they are not available until you find the right person to work in your household. And of course, here I'm talking about downtown Abbey. Um, you know, very few people live like that these days. But if you think about it, there are many situations in which regular households are going to post l pointed ads. So if you're a household, you know, if you want to hire a nanny uh, for your family, if you want to hire uh, an au pair uh, who is going to work for your family, um, some people you know, are, are going to hire, say, a landscaping team or gardeners who come from time to time to work on their gardens. You may have a cleaner uh, who comes to your household on a regular basis. Um, you may have babysitters. Uh, you may have tutors for your kids. Um, you may have people who come to work on your house, like a handyman when there are some issues. Um, so in all these situations, in fact, that are at the end of the day, uh, fairly, fairly common, um, you will 
you know, post uh, help wanted ads or you will spend some time to try to find the right person for the job. And so, you know, you have a position that's open and you would like to have somebody work for you, but it takes a while to find that person. So, you know, in a situation like that, you have a vacant consumption that's very similar to, uh, to a vacant job when you want to hire labor services. Um, but it, you know, it doesn't have to be, uh, it doesn't have to be labor services, even in a world in which you're looking for goods, you have uh, unfulfilled consumption. So here again, uh, let me start with a dramatic example. Um, so this, what you see here, uh, these are cues. of uh, customers who are trying to buy a uh, bread and, and these um, photos come from uh, Russia uh, from the beginning of the 20th century where um, you know there were uh, it was a planned economy and um, this type of cues to purchase all kinds of uh, necessities are very well documented. So this is you know, a world in which you don't have enough uh, supply uh, compared to the demand. Uh, and therefore, people have to queue for a long time until they can get some bread. Um, so this is another example, you know, queuing to get a good. It's another example of an unfulfilled consumption because you have to spend you know, quite a lot of time until you can get what you want. Uh, what you want to buy. And, you know, at the time, there may have been also actually rationing imposed by the state, so you may not have been able to uh, buy as much uh, the uh, quantity that you actually desired in a case like this. Um, and so clearly here there is, uh, you know, there is unfulfilled consumption due to maybe not sufficient uh, supply or maybe, uh, you know, combined with a pricing system that was um, out of whack. But, you know, so this is a historical example. Of course, in market economies, you could think you don't really see this type of situation. But in fact, if you think about it, it's actually quite common to queue uh, for goods, even in, in the U.S. today. I mean, uh, people who live in New York or in San Francisco, they seem to queue for um, basically everything uh, whenever they want to buy uh, stuff. So here are a few uh, pictures that I took uh, in San Francisco in recent years. Uh, so you have uh, on the left hand side people queuing at uh, Tartine, uh, very nice bakery in the Mission, and on the right hand side people queuing in the evening for, at a, for a restaurant. Uh, you know, this is the same, it's people would like to consume stuff, but they have to wait, uh, you know, there's large demand for what they want to consume, and so they have to wait, spend a lot of time um, doing that, or so you know, this time they could have spent doing other things, or if the queue is too long, people may decide to go to another place um, to, you know, have a meal or buy some bread, and that may not be like exactly the good that they want, so they may have uh, to buy goods that are not as satisfactory. So instead of spending time, they settle on consumption that's not exactly what they want. Um, so in both cases, you have some, you know, whether you queue and you waste time or you get other goods, you have, uh, you know, unfulfilled consumption uh, if you want, um, even, in, even in market economies. Um, and another type of thing that can happen is that you know, you may want to also, so here we see people queuing, but sometimes you have reservation system and, you know, table, may, you know, your restaurant may be completely full or you want to get a haircut and, uh, you know, the person may be uh, very busy and you're not able to get an appointment or you want to go to the doctor and there are no appointments available and so you have to postpone your visit to the doctor. So in all situations like this, um, there is again other example of consumption that's unfulfilled where you either have to wait till you get that consumption or settle for consumption that's not exactly what you want and that's, uh, you know, that doesn't match your need as well. So here again, there is some uh, ways that would occur. Um, and also, so these are, you know, people um, queuing. Another thing that can happen, that's a manifestation of this unfulfilled consumption is when you want to buy goods and you have stock out. Uh, so here, you know, I just have a, uh, 
have an example from uh, my life. So I wanted to buy a wetsuit. Uh, and uh, as you can see, you know, all the models of wetsuit that I was looking at, uh, two of them are actually sold out. Uh, and so that's another example where I have a wetsuit in mind. I'd like to purchase it, uh, but because of you know not enough supply, um, and we know that there are a lot of supply chain disruptions because of the pandemic, um, then you're just not able to buy the good you get. And so two things I can do is I can wait until the wetsuit becomes available, which in this case I have to wait maybe a month, um, or I can settle for another brand or another type of wetsuit that wouldn't work as well. Um, so that's another uh, another example sold out would be another example of unfulfilled consumption. Um, and in fact, on this, we have a tiny bit of data. Uh, Mark Bills had a, a paper in 2004 where he was looking at um, micro data from the consumer price index. And he found that stockouts are actually quite common. Um, he found that for uh, consumption goods in the 90s, so I think the period of the paper was 1988 to 2004, um, actually looking at durables, the rate of stockouts for durables was 9%. Um, so it means that when you show up at the store and you want to buy a durable during that period, there is a 9% chance that that good is not available and you have to either go somewhere else, uh, you know, to try to find it or settle on something that doesn't work as well for your specific, uh, for your specific needs. Um, so that's another, you know, that's another number that tells you that uh, there is also on the goods and product market um, sometimes consumption that's going to be unfulfilled. Um, and here we've looked only at households uh, being the uh, buyers, but of course firms also have to buy stuff that's not labor, but that's intermediate uh, goods on product market and they face the same constraints sometimes you have. You know, they have to try to find suppliers and that takes time. And sometimes they have to wait a long time until they get the good from their suppliers. Sometimes they don't get the good they want. They have to settle for other goods. So all these issues of unfulfilled consumption we've talked about here for consumers, the same happen for firms when they try to purchase intermediate uh, goods where they are not seller of goods, but buyer of goods, you have the same issues. Um, and so in, in all these situations, the matching framework actually would be quite helpful to, to think about uh, to think about how we can have, at the same time, idle capacity on the producer side and unfulfilled consumption on the consumer uh, on the consumer side. 